Hello and welcome back to Scale War Machines and part two of this review and demonstration of Heavy Hobbies 3D printed accessories. In the last video I unboxed everything and we took a look at some of the references in this vast and expansive range. In this second part I'll be taking a much deeper look at some chosen references, preparing them for construction and paint, and running through all the tools and techniques to get a good result with this particular style of accessories. Let's get started. Okay, so the tools at our disposal are fairly classic. I've gone for sharp scalpel and your side cutter. Let's start with the air conditioning unit. So the first step is to cut away access. It's quite brittle, so you need to be careful. But what I'm going to do is just cut around all of this so I can get to the stalks. I'm going to get a brand new blade. Okay, I mean to just carefully, carefully remove all of the stalks. Okay, so you can either do it on the body itself. Now the other alternative is to detach them from the bottom, which you can do. What I prefer to do is just kind of nibble away at both. And then eventually it should detach, hopefully without any damage. And because it's so finely printed, you can see there's just a bit of residue on the bottom that you can clean up with a needle file. And that's it. So that took all of, I don't know, a minute or two. And then it's ready for construction. And I'll show you some shots of attaching all the photo etch. And I'll show you the painted product. Okay, so far so good. But what about if you have something more complex like this? I'm going to attempt to attach everything from this and see how I get on. The potential for damaging things is of course there. Okay, with the side pieces removed, we can proceed to very gently remove individual items. For this I'm going to use the side cutters. Ah, oh, our first damage. There we go. So it is possible to damage things. That's my fault for going too quickly. So clearly we're going to have to proceed with real caution here. Being very careful. Just work your way along gently, cutting away at the base. Any breakages can be fixed with super glue. And it's just a case of final tidy up and we're good to go. And after clean up, that piece will be fine. Remove any stubs or nubs and you just give it a final clean up with a sanding stick. We're going to pick this piece here and give that a go. The lesson I've learned is to proceed really, really carefully and slowly. Now what's annoying is you get cross stalks as well, so you need to think about that. To remove things in pairs. So with patience, you get it removed. And there's the part, ready for priming and painting. And finally, I'm going to attempt to remove the most complex item from its little printing stalks. If you just go slow, and most modelers are used to working really slowly, the fear of course is if something snaps. Okay, I had a couple of breakages. Appears to be my first breakage. That's my first fail. One whilst I was removing it, 
and the other I could see on the number two aerial that was I was about to attempt. I did manage to detach one. This is basically the way I found to remove the aerials in the end after a fair bit of trial and error. And how I proceeded was I removed all the bits around the edge. The final stage is to take a scalpel to the final little pins until you get it off. That's the piece detached. Now it's far from perfect, there's still a few little bits to clean up. This is where it's really fragile. Now I've tried cleaning up various ways and to be honest the best way is just with a pair of cutters very gently. Just try and get it as clean as you can. Then I use a needle file just to try and smooth it off. Success. Now it's just got to survive the painting process. What I'm going to do with these is try out different ways of painting them to see if it has an effect. So one I will probably just paint straight with acrylic paint. The other I'm going to prime and this one maybe I'll do a bit of both to see what gives the best result. You'll remember that when I reviewed this, this piece was the only one where I felt I could see the resolution of the printing and there were fine lines or striations. Right, without further ado, I'll just grab a bit of towel so I can paint these. And I'll start off doing half of this with primer. Okay, we'll let that one dry. I'm just going to prime this piece. And that'll enable you to see how it comes out under primer. Whilst this one will just be sprayed neat. Taking a look at these, what's really pleasing is the tubular item has come out pretty well. Certainly in the areas I sanded, you can see some problems there on the underside. And that's the side I didn't sand. So clearly it benefited from some sanding. Which leads me then to paint it in two different types of paint to see how it fares. So I've gone for AK's Dunkelgelb and I'm going to spray that piece just neat in that. That's how it looks after a coat of paint, no primer. This one I'll just give a blast in hairspray to help with the weathering. This one down here, I'm going to spray the other side in Tamiya Dunkelgelb to see if there's any difference. There you can see the effect. Pretty good. It is worth just cleaning these up. Now what I should say is some of these look a bit warped because I did hit these with the heat gun. Uh, to speed up the drying process, so they are straight usually. That's more my fault. All right, let's do the next one. There's no way I'm going to use the heat gun on this aerial, having taken so long to get it out. There you can see what they look like under their base coats and in a minute I'll show you them weathered. But overall they've come up really well. The detail responds brilliantly to paint and they look fantastic. But judge for yourself. There we have it, the finished items just quickly painted and weathered so you can see what they look like. Here are some close-up shots. What can I say about this new range of 3D printed References from Heavy Hobby. On the plus side, you can see that the finished result is really, really realistic. Finely rendered, finely detailed, and once you detach them, you don't have to deal with anything like photo etch in order to get a really good detailed result like this. There's choice too, so with references like the fire extinguisher, 
it enables you to customize your model and either have a fire extinguisher fitted or use things like the empty brackets, something like that would be quite fiddly to make in PhotoEdge. You can see that the advantage is once you've got everything detached, it's fairly easy to attach to the model. I would say I had some difficulty gluing these items to the runners, particularly to shiny type plastic. And it may be that further experimentation is needed to see what the best glue for these is. This is attached to card using super glue. Super glue will work, of course. The air conditioner was a pleasing little kit in itself and it came with good quality photo etch and it came out nicely, in this case a very weathered example. Some observations then, items like this aerial here were really, really tricky to remove. Indeed this I managed to remove it, everything was fine, and just in the final stages now I just knocked it and had to glue it with some super glue just to fortify it a bit. Therefore some of these smaller items are incredibly fiddly. I don't know how you'd make that out of photo etch without having a similar level of aggravation, to be honest. More blocky items like this and this are very easy to remove, really. The headlights, well, that's a no-brainer. These are great detailed items that would go well on pretty much any kit. Fire extinguisher, the same. I love these uh, sort of evergreen diorama items. Again, good levels of detail and really, really pleasing. To conclude then, I really enjoyed working with these, apart from the aerial which was a pain in the backside, but everything else was super enjoyable to work on. The rounded item did need a bit of sanding, these items didn't, and you would have seen that it's possible just to paint these straight up with a good paint like AK or Tamiya. Thanks ever so much for watching, I really appreciate it. I apologise I haven't been able to put out as, as much content as usual, but I've had a lot of stuff to do with work and I have been active in other areas with scale war machines that I'll tell you about in a future video. Anyway, for now, that's it. Goodbye and I leave you with these close-ups. See you next time. Subscribe for our latest videos.